We're here at CSC Ranches in Pilot Point, Texas, and we are a hot blistering deal again this time, and so we've got Porticool that has saved us again. We're almost into fall, but not yet. We're getting ready for the Virginia contest, who our judge and clinician will be Mr. Michael Kukinen from Denmark, and we've got a good set of shoes that we'll be bringing to you. Today we'll be making the specimen portion of the live shoeing, the Liberty live shoeing, and the specimen today is a bar shoe that is made out of 15 and 3 eighths by 3 eighths by one. The shoe measures with uh, five and three quarter wide by six inches long. It's old school fuller and it's feathered out in the toe and it is punched for a E4. It's got a set toe in it that is set almost to the back edge of the stock and it rolls around to each side of the shoe. And then it's got a softened edge that's pretty exact on the back edge of the, the shoe. And it's got a pretty big frog plate that's not set down in the bar. The bar measures approximately three inches wide. All right, we've got a piece of bar stock that is 15 and 3 eighths inches long. I'm gonna put a center punch mark on edge on the inside edge because we're gonna really set down the toe and I'll probably lose it in the forging, but I'll keep my mark on the inside. I wanna put it on the edge just so I can fudge around. I'm gonna use a T-square to mark my fullerin, but I'm gonna use this to just keep my shape and keep a reference mark. All right, we'll come out, crack the toe. Start here and I'm going to just keep my hammer uh, ahead of the horn and just kind of gather it up, tighten up the toe without really forging on it. Again, start here and I'm just ahead of the top of the horn so I'm not, I'm not forging at all and I'm just pushing it right on down and, and tightening the toe. We'll hang over just about two inches. Stay close to the horn, but don't hit the horn. Come back at it and get it to lock in right away. Clean up this back edge. Tuck in your toe and start to bend. Just get it right up to the edge. If you hold it right where the toe is and you hit the bar, you can make the bar pretty much go with the toe. And when I say that, you just kind of come in here and work on getting that bar nice with the branch. We're going to come in here and get your soft corner and just scarf it. Repeat the process for the other side. Stay close to the horn, but don't hit the horn. Scarf it. Got to scarf this one first because you don't have the luxury of not having that other branch not be in your way. Push it up and keep following it around. You can see how it's pointed up a little bit, so just knock that around. I'll stick it together, kind of take some heat, and then I'll flux it. All right, I got a little bit of heat on it so I can scarf it. I'm just going to pull my tips together. Using the edge of the hammer, just kind of pulling that down, just so I get a nice clean weld. You can see the fact that when you scarf it like this, now whenever I scarf, when I weld this side, that scarf is off the anvil, so it's not sucking the heat out of the, the weld. Then when you flip it over, obviously, 
it does the same thing. Flux it up. All right, using the edge of the hammer, I'm just gonna knead those scarves in just to where everything is nice and pulled tight. Come up here with the round side of my hammer and get the back pushed in. What I've got is all the surface area has been tacked together. You can see that there's a ton of material. Everything's been pushed together. I got it welded. Now, now I can start forging on it. I'll take another welding heat. You know, when you're forging on a weld, you always want to scarf it and get it up to temperature. Otherwise, you're actually pulling it apart instead of putting it together. So now I got everything put together and I'm just gonna bring all my seams together, make it nice one piece. I'm gonna come up here and start to fuller that tip down. When you're fullering the one side down, the other side's coming up. I'm using the edge of the hammer and pulling that corner down. Do the same on this side. Then you can see, I'm gonna pull like I'm water skiing, I'm pulling, and I'm hitting this corner. That's fuller in the, the bar down. I gotta fuller this side down a little bit more. And then I'll do the same thing. Come in here. The difference between hitting it here and hitting it here is that I'm always adding material when I'm hitting it here. Just kind of getting everything nice and flat, forging out the, the little tip on the frog plate. And again, coming in here and fullering it down to where that makes the frog plate really look big. And then you come in here and tighten everything up. All that does is pull that frog plate out. So much material in there now. I can just basically flatten it up and make it come to size. Old school feather fullering, but the toenails are right behind the back edge of the stock. So we're just, this is just gonna give us a rough estimation of where we start our fullerin. Just kind of straddle it. And what that'll do, now I'm just gonna run my edges. My stock is still pretty wide. I'll run my edges and we'll fuller it. We're just gonna go from the center of the shoe and kind of work everything down. Since there's old school fuller and we're gonna put a set on the toe, we're gonna gain material like nobody's business. So I'm gonna definitely run the whole thing down before I come in here, and get this nice and neck down, and build that frog plate a little bit. I'm gonna do the same from this side. Come in here, go all the way around. The reason I'm going right through the toe is because the toe's gonna get wide whenever we put that, that set down on it. Mark our fullering out. Use my bar as a square. I'm gonna come back here and start my I got a little bit of a soft corner here, a nice, I'm gonna put that in there first, just kind of start taking that as I go. 
And then I'll come through and flatten everything up. Nice flattening blows. Come in here and just gather up my edge a little bit. Go from the heel nail and gather up the edge a little bit. Come up here and get that little bit of forging off and that uh, keeps on pulling my frog plate out. I'll repeat this on the other side. From the center, I'm just gonna gather it up and just kinda go all the way around. When you get right to the end, I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna pull into that corner. This is gonna climb my frog plate up even a little bit more. It's just this move right here. I've got my bar straight with the back of the anvil. I've got this toenail locked on this side of the anvil, and I don't care about how far up my fullerin marks are. Old school fullerin allows you to adjust that as you go, but you can't change your rack nail. So then now I come in here, and I got where my toenail is supposed to go. And heel nails at the widest part. And split the difference. I've got it basically roughed out. Now I'm gonna put my tongs in the bar. I'm gonna try and hold up and keep the toe in the center. And I'm gonna push out my toe. And then I'm gonna follow, it follows around the edge a little bit. So I'll come around that first nail hole from this side, but I'll start it from the back side. Pick up. All I'm doing is getting that set in there all the way back to the back edge. Pick it up. He's got that, that toe softened up right to the back edge. I'll just work this down a little bit. Run one edge and then rasp it. Run the other edge, rasp it, and tidy up my fullerin. I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna tighten up that toe a little bit and go all the way around. Come up here again and clean up that heel. lines on it and again just coming in here and building that frog plate the whole time Flatten it up and we'll go to the vise.
really got after it with the, the sanding box and the rasp and the toe to blend everything in. Now, just kind of make everything look nice and flow. Do the other side. Flatten it up. I think we're pretty much, we got it where we want it. 